Hey everyone! We are making the greatest of efforts to keep this channel on the PG side of things, but while we have complete control over what we say and do, we have no say in what the game says and does. As such, we're bound to run into situations like this where we have ourselves a seemingly innocent game with brief moments of non-PG related content. In the interest of transparency, and so you don't end up investing time in something that you may not find appropriate, the subject of the questionable content is listed here. Happy watching! Hello everybody, today we are playing Kathy Brain, a detective is born, we are gonna detect stuff. So I've already taken a little peek at the options, there's not much there, so we are just going to jump right into the game. It was recommended to me by my sister, I have no idea what happens, but let's uh, give it a go. Just as the music ramps up. Hey you! Hey. Uh, hey. What? Oh, man. Oh, God. This is so comfy. I'm just gonna lie here and suffocate on my own vomit now. That's nice. I, uh, I had a thing I wanted to tell you. Uh-huh. This room sure looks different when it's spinning. So I was browsing through the used book ads in the paper when I... Listen, Eileen, I'm totally excited about books right now, but... Wait, hear me out! So I noticed this article about a war veteran from Conwell Springs who just died. I remembered that you used to live there and everything, and... Oh, how I wish for joyful, blissful sleep. A and get this! His name was Joseph. Joseph Rain. Hmm. What did you just say? You knew him, right? I knew it! I knew you'd know him! Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, he is, was my grandfather. I really don't want to talk about it, or I haven't seen him since I was a kid a lifetime ago. Let's, uh, do this one. Yeah, he is was my grandfather. Hey, wait a minute. I never told you where I grew up. <gasps> oh, well, I, uh, well, I might have sort of looked you up. Stalker. That is not cool, Eileen. Seriously. I just couldn't help myself. Well, one of these days you're gonna help yourself to a restraining order. I'm just telling you this as a friend. I know. <sighs> you know, well, and yet... Anyway, you should know that the funeral is tomorrow. Okay. Are you gonna go? I don't know. Good night, Eileen. <sighs> Good night, Kathy. Wow, Kathy Rain is edgy. I was not expecting that. Also note that there are complete polar opposites sharing a room. They both have bunk beds, but apparently they both only need one bed. September 25th, 1995, day one. Oh God, make it stop. It's all the way over here. Why is the alarm all the way over here? Look at alarm clock. Sure, let's look at Eileen's it. Eileen's obnoxious alarm clock. The noise makes me want to stab myself with something dull. She's not even here. Let's turn that off. Looks like Eileen left a note for me here. Hi, Kat. Since it's such a long drive, I set the alarm so you won't miss the funeral. Thank me later. E. Oh. I'm so getting a new roommate. For real. Well, I guess I should get going. I'm late enough as it is. It's being very heavy-handed. Let's look at the bed. Eileen makes her bed with surgical precision. Eileen needs to relax a little bit. <laughs> we can mess up the bed. Mm, yeah, let's mess it up. <laughs> Would be fun, but a bit too childish. Even for That's me. That's not childish. It's all in good fun. She's just going to mess it up Eileen's when she sleeps in it anyway. Suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. Eileen Mildred Summers. Mildred. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna get her for that. I wish I could wrap up that fact and save it for Christmas. I'm terrible with names, so I have to like... Makeup check, hair check, horrible mood, and contempt for humanity check. I have to go out of my way to make sure that I remember names. Closet. Let's look. Eileen's closet. Filled to the brink with inherited clothes and Christian joy. Oh boy. 
I can certainly see the appeal of blindly rummaging through Eileen's clothes, but seriously, I've got better things to do. There's a pink bear! She's got a Titanic poster. We meet again, Mr. Bear. Don't give me that look. It's not my fault you ended up so close to my lighter. Oh, that's mean. That movie's not out yet. It's a promo poster Eileen got for being an extra. Oh, she's, well. She tells everyone who walks in here the same joke. Spoiler alert, the boat sinks. I mean, I know that these aren't real people, but it'd be cool to be an extra in the Titanic. I'm fairly sure it's about some guy who falls in love with his golden retriever. I can't tell what it is. It's too pixelated. I think that movie is about a girl and a boy who hate each other at first, and then they fall in love for no reason at all. So, like, every other movie oh. ever. <laughs> That's every romantic comedy ever. See? So, her side, which is obviously a mess. What? A scanner? Oh, like a... Like a... Back it's scanner? some advanced scanner thingy. It can scan pictures, tapes, all sorts of stuff. Pictures, tapes. For what? Our room phone. It's got an external line. Oh. Use phone. Oh, okay. I can use the phone, but I don't have some anybody to call. Oh, the only contact I have is the dorm room, and that's us. Not that I don't love the sound of my own voice, but... Yeah, we're just... If somebody did this in real life, you would look crazy. Let me pick up the phone and call myself. Messy. Just the way I like it. Look at Eve. She even ripped the door off of the uh, her side of the desk. The Thing. One of my favorite horror movies. She's so... Pulp Fiction. Love that flick. Yeah, I've seen Pulp Fiction. Just some random band poster. <laughs> just some random band. I just put it on my wall. Why not? Let's get in bed. Nah, I just got up. All right, let's go. Point and click adventure game, guys. I didn't know it would be a point and click adventure game. So you're going to see me get stuck. I'm telling you now. The cemetery. That's where we're headed. Gotta say goodbye to Gramps. Grandpa died. He was a vet. Served in the war. Well, here we are. Mm -hmm. No one else is God, here. God, I really need a smoke. Smoking is bad for you, don't Does smoke. Does anyone object? I object. Guess not. Ugh. Dead people rule. Oh boy. <laughs> Smoking is bad for you kids, don't smoke. It's bad for your health. No time for that now. I'm late for the funeral. I'm just, just, let's see what's here. Tombstone, to the mo let's look at the mausoleum. price. Think about the mausoleum. family mausoleum. The family must have been fairly rich. Those things don't come cheap. It's like an above-ground grave with your family no in it. No to go in there. It's actually kind of creepy. Price. All right, let's move around. Oh, I found it. I found it. Ooh, look at those. You're gathered here today. The sky. A person of great integrity. A pillar of the community and a decorated war hero. Mm -hmm. His name was Joseph Irving Rain. We all remember his warm heart, his compassion, and his eagerness to help others. His passing while our loss is surely heaven's gain. Now we entrust our brother Joseph to God's mercy. We commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, mm -hmm. ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ who will transform our frail bodies so they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. Amen. Oh. Oh, Kathy, you big baby, just talk to her. Is this her, is this the, is this grandma? Mrs. Rain. Mary Elizabeth Rain, my grandmother on my father's side. Yep. It's grandma. Let's go say hi. Uh, excuse me? Mrs. Mrs. Rain? Rain? Have we met on? 
You look strangely familiar. Oh, okay, there. It's me. It's Catherine. Catherine? Who? Ooh. You don't recognize me? I guess it's been a while. I might be a bit taller than you remember me. Kathy? Bless my soul. Look at you, all grown up. Oh, how I wish Joseph could see you now, finally coming home. Let's hope he can. Wherever he is. I'm a bad Comfort grandchild. Him, dear. Lord, how long has it been? Ten years? Fifteen. Fifteen? Fifteen sounds about right. I was six when Mom took me away. Goodness. We have some catching up to do then. <laughs> I want to know everything. Listen, I'm not quite ready to leave yet, but... Why don't you join me at the house in half an hour? Sure, I'd love to. I passed it on my way here. It shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll see you soon then. I'm so glad you found your way back home. I can't wait for us to have a chance to talk. Same here. See you in a bit. It's interesting that she's been gone for 15 years and yet she... Oh, a stun gun. A lighter and pack, lighter and pack cigarettes. She's been gone for 15 years and yet she decided to come to the funeral for a grandfather that she hasn't seen in 15 years. I haven't written anything in it yet. Just taking a look at the inventory. Elizabeth Parker. Eric Mitchell. Lily Myers. All right. Price was notable because they have a mausoleum. Stephen Cummings. Oh, the priest is here. Father something, I'm sure. It's the priest who performed the service here. You don't want to get me started. Let's just say me and the humble servants of God have a history of not getting along. Hmm. So no talking? I'm sorry for your loss. No direct conversation Thanks. to the priest. Oh, I guess so. God. The Church of the Holy Trinity is always open to you. Is that so? Here, have a brochure. It's never too late to turn away from the path of sin. He just walks around with brochures. And what makes you so sure I'm on a sinful path, Father? You're not familiar with the concept of a lost cause, are you? No sin? But what am I supposed to do for fun? And what makes you so sure I'm on a sinful path, Father? Wouldn't you say that prejudice is but a small step from the seven big ones? I simply meant that we are all sinful creatures, child. I hope to see you at the church. Don't get your hopes up, buddy. It I'll pray for you. I wish you comfort in this time of grief. It's interesting that priests are supposed to be so trustworthy, and yet they're so untrustworthy in games. You can never trust the priests. <laughs> in real life, you're supposed to be able to trust them, but I suppose you can't do that either. Let's go to Grandma's house. The Rain residence. She called her Mrs. Rain. Not even Grandma. Mrs. Rain. Grandma. Anybody home? All of a sudden it's Grandma. Quick 20 minute conversation. Not even. Five minutes. That's a red horse. Cute red horse. It's some old Swedish thing, I think. Oh, Swedish. The Swedish. This paint looks fresh. Grandma must have had this restored recently. The red horse. Nice black leather coat. Right up my alley. An old wheelchair. Not too dusty. Probably used recently. Let's see. Think about huh. it. Never seen this around. Grandpa must have used it towards the end. It's been 15 years, though. How would you know any of this? Dog fighting. Grandpa used to love that stuff. They're planes, not dogs. I mean, I know it's referred to as dog fighting, but just some kind of winter forest. Clearing scene. up confusion. I've always wondered if it's supposed to be Conwell Woods or not. Conwell. That's the living room door. Let's move in a little bit. A small table lamp. These should come in handy when I need to make calls. Oh, wait, what is this? A phone book. So I can call people. I should be able to use this for looking up phone numbers of people or places in town. That's what a phone book is for. I don't have anything to search for. Yeah, we're not at the point where we're calling people. It's a photo of this very farm from way back. It says June 12, 1910 in the corner. That's old. A wedding photo from when my grandparents married. They look younger than I am now. Things have sure changed. 
As thing as they do. All right, let's. We can go upstairs. We can go in the living room. We'll go in the. We'll do the first floor first if it gives us the option to get to the second floor later. Well, there's Grandma. Oh, hello, dear. I was just wondering what took you so long. Sorry, I couldn't resist taking that old wheelchair for a spin. <laughs> oh, don't give me that look. I put it back. You haven't changed one bit. Always kidding around, just like when you were little. Come have a seat. We have so much to talk about. Sure. So, now, tell me about your life in the city. Oh, there's not much to tell. I'm going to school for journalism. It's my second year. I ride a motorcycle in case you missed it there out front. Ah, oh, that's right. Just like your father. Yeah, I suppose. Hmm. I must ask. Have you heard anything from your father? Anything at all? No, nothing since he bailed way back then. I expected as much. He disappeared without a trace. No matter, that's ancient history. Oh boy. <laughs> How Sharon then? Moving on. T tell the truth, you had her committed to a mental institution. Avoid the subject, no reason to bring it up now. Um, it's my mom. I haven't seen you in 15 years. We'll keep it close to the vest uh, for now. Mom's good. Yeah. She's kind of between jobs right now, but things are okay. I'm glad to hear it. I was worried about how you two would cope in the city, considering Sharon's problems. Yeah, about that. I'm sorry I didn't visit sooner, Grandma. Mom, she told me all these horrible lies about you and Grandpa. When I was old enough to understand what she was doing, I felt like it was much too late. It wasn't your fault, dear. You were a child. I'm just happy that you're here now. Me too. So, what about you? How have you been doing all these years? I've been lonely ever since the accident. There's no denying that. What accident? Yeah, what accident? Goodness gracious. Of course you don't know. She took you away before it all happened. Don't know what? I will never forget that dreadful day. August 16th, 1981. It was the middle of the night when Sheriff Truman knocked on our door. He had Joseph with him. I couldn't even recognize Joseph at first. All dirty and wet with an awful blank stare on his face. Mm. Like his soul had been ripped from his body. Since that day, he never spoke a word forever confined to that blasted wheelchair. Oh. Really? For all this time? I had no idea. See, I told you she wouldn't know. The game is a shock to all of us. That's horrible, Grandma. I'm so sorry. Thank you, dear. Incident in 81. Taking a quick pause here because I forgot to sync audio, so I'm gonna do it now. One, two, three, four, Five. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Five, 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 five. Um, hmm. I'm already to like 20 minutes in. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Why do you think Grandpa suddenly left that night in 81? I haven't the faintest idea. He acted very peculiar not long before it happened, disappearing for hours at a time. At first, I even suspected he was having an affair. When I asked him about it, he just said he was chasing old demons. He must have had something to do with the war. Hmm. Post-traumatic stress disorder? What did the doctor say? What about the police? Maybe it was post-traumatic stress disorder? Grandpa always had a hard time showing weakness. I don't know, dear. I I'm just speculating. I didn't think too much of it at the time. I guess. Joseph was a man of few words. I'm sure he just didn't wish to burden me with it, whatever it was. Plus the accident. It kind of pulls your attention away of why he went out in the first place. What did the doctors say? What did the doctors have to say about Grandpa's condition? Persistent vegetative state. That's what they call it. Oof. I've heard it all by now. One doctor said it was a stroke. Another claimed it was a seizure. The third hack tried to sell it off as a severe infection. Oh. It's all a load of tripe. I had an MRI performed on Joseph. 
It's one of those state-of-the-art head scans. Oh yeah, this was a while ago. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yes, well, according to the scan, his brain was completely intact. They thought it was a technical problem at the time, some kind of glitch. But the result was the same after three different scans on three different machines. Eventually, they had to confess that they simply had no credible explanation for the state he was in. Whoa, calm hmm. down. And this injury just happened to occur on the very same night he mysteriously disappears? Indeed. I refuse to believe it was a coincidence. What about the police? What did Sheriff Truman have to say about the matter? <sighs> Not much. He said they simply found Joseph in that condition on the outskirts of town. The sheriff was convinced there was some kind of foul play involved, but the investigation turned up nothing. He later said that he was sorry, but that he was forced to close the case. You know, I could try to find out more about this. I am a journalist. You're welcome to try, dear. Some kind of closure would mean the world to me. Okay, I think I'll head over to the sheriff's station for a little chat then. Would be nice to witness police doing some actual police service for once. Hmm. Sure, you go ahead. Let me know if I can be of any more help. Um, so did he well, have any gotta go, Grams. physical Talk to you later. injuries? Bye, Kathy. Grams. How quickly we became familiar. From Mrs. Rain to Grandma to Grams. Grandma has prepared some tea for us. Drink some? Nah, I'm more of a coffee gal. That's rude. She offers you tea, you're supposed to take nice it. Nice leather chair. Freckles, the old farm cat, used to love that thing. Wow, it's, it's interesting how much she remembers. A robust piece of wooden furniture. I used to love digging through those drawers when I was a kid, looking for coins, buttons, and trinkets. Grandpa and me, we had this game where he would hide pennies around the house and I would go on a treasure hunt. Never in the attic, though. I thought it was too scary up there. I don't blame you, attics are scary. Planes, planes, and more planes. Grandpa in his Air Force uniform looks to be in his early 20s. That's my great-grandfather, Eric Wren. I never met him. They changed the spelling to Rain after he died, I think. Some woman dressed fancy. I'm not sure how I'm related to her, but she has my hair. In natural colors, I'm sure. Planes, planes, and more planes. What's this? This here. Planes, planes... <laughs> And more planes. Lots of planes. Got it. There's nothing quite like the soothing sound of rain falling on a window. Let's look at the bookshelf. Attics are scary. A decent sized book collection. Most of them science or history related from the looks of it. Oh, there's... Is it... Oh, the curtains. Doesn't look special to me. Alright. Alright. So, we're done in here. Kind of exhausted everything. Let's leave. Can we go upstairs? I shouldn't overstay my welcome. Mm. We can't go upstairs. I bet all the secrets are up there. There's nothing quite like the soothing sound of rain falling on a window. So are we going to the police station? It's dangerous to ride a motorcycle in the rain. She just li she just lives for danger, apparently, this Kathy Rain. Go to the sheriff's station. I'm here. Land of the free. That's America. Merca. Not their peak hours, it seems. Merca. A medieval fortress near an ocean. Probably supposed to be somewhere in Europe. These landscape pictures are cool. A bunch of cops hey, lining up for What's a photo. What's the deal with that bum? What bum? The one in the cell. Well, shit. Hey, language. A medieval fortress near an ocean, probably supposed to be somewhere in Europe. Various notices and a wanted poster. Young cop and his files and his desk. Might be something useful in there. Let's just search it. I think he'd object. Yeah, no kidding. Some young cop. Looks a bit familiar. Probably someone you grew up with. Hi. Hello. Hello. Why, hello there. Do I have to commit a crime to get your attention? Because I seriously will. 
Ma'am, I'm really quite busy at the moment. Hey, wait. I know you. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you don't. Yes, I do. You're Kathy. Kathy Rain. My reputation precedes me in a kind of but not totally creepy way. Aw, oh, come on. It's me, Lenny. Lenny Marks. Admit the truth, you have no clue who he is, pretend to recognize him. Okay, so I typically go with the truth. I, f I think that honesty is the best policy. I'm sure I've said this before, but even when I play games like The Walking Dead, I try to stick to the truth. Be honest. I know I lied once already and it seems a bit hypocritical, but that was, that was super personal. This, this isn't personal. I'm drawing a blank. Really? You don't remember us playing when we were little kids? Not really. Sorry, buddy. Darn. I, well, that's hmm. a bummer. They grew anyway, together. what can I do for you today? Incident in 81. I wanted to ask if you know anything about my grandfather's Should tase him. I really don't know much beyond the rumors. The sheriff may have more information, but even he probably doesn't know anything that isn't in the report. It happened before either of us worked here. Okay, I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff then. Sure thing. His office is to your right. I like how you can just walk into the sheriff's office. Well, gotta go. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. There's a sheriff looking real busy. That must be the sheriff. He looks, he looks grumpy. grumpy. What's, what's up, sheriff? Hello, sheriff. Do you have a moment? Not really. Make it quick. Whoa. Do you know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? He had a stroke in the woods. That's what happened. Hmm. If that's all there is... Why would Sheriff Truman open an investigation? It was just standard procedure. A general occurrence report always has to be filed. I see. Did you know him at all? No, I haven't been in town for long. Man sure has one hell of a reputation, though. It's been over a decade since he was put in that wheelchair, and people still talk about the man he used to be. It's like he was a cult leader or something. Ten years. Sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. Could be, but you know what they say. Things too good to be true usually are. True. Police report. Could I have a look at that report? Absolutely not. They are official police documents. Why not? I thought filed police reports are public record. Not in this state, they ain't. What state is this? Come on, Sheriff, what's the big deal? But I'm family, doesn't that count for something? Lenny, a little help here? But I'm family, doesn't that count for something? You consider yourself family? I've never even seen you before. You said you town. just got here. It's complicated. Guess what's complicated? Not to mention illegal. Handing out evidence to anyone who asks for it. How is it evidence? It's just a report. Lenny, a little help here? Don't you agree that he's taking by the book too far? Well, uh, boss, she is his granddaughter, really. I don't think it's any... Don't you think I know that? There are rules. Am I the only one in here who cares about the law? Too much coffee? Try not to pop a vein. You want to see the inside of a cell? Oh, cuff me, officer. Spare me the torment of your rhetorical questions and veiled threats. Just follow the rules like everyone else. I've had enough of this nonsense. Fine. What? Wait, what are the rules? Just some photo. I can't see it clearly from here. A photo of the sheriff shaking hands with some bald guy in a suit. Politician, for Probably sure. Probably the mayor. It's always the mayor. Mm. Just some photo. I can't see it clearly from here. There's a medal. A gold medal of some kind. Can I walk over there? Just some photo. I can't see I it clearly from here. On, uh, okay, I guess. Maybe halfway through. That's no good. We're gonna have to cancel lunch today. Again? Oh, man. No lunch. Tons of miscellaneous files. I don't see anything labeled as police reports, so those must be elsewhere. Lenny's got him. Lots of police reports, organized alphabetically by the looks of it. I would, but I can't do that when he's right there. Maybe I can distract him somehow. Hey, Lenny, you hungry? Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Um, uh, yeah, the police report. Hey, I need to see the police report from 81 when my grandfather was found by the old sheriff. I'd love to help, Kathy. The files are right here behind me. But you better check with the sheriff first. Mm. 
Okay, I'll do that. Sheriff already said no. I have, a ch I have the church brochure. <laughs> Show stun gun. Well, gotta go. See ya. I'm Looks like talking isn't gonna help me get that report. I'll have to take matters into my own hands. There's the thing that gets me. He I said follow the rules. He said follow the rules, but he didn't say what the rules were. It's the brochure that priest gave me at the funeral. The logo stands out, but other than that, it's just the usual church mumbo jumbo. Washing away your sins, salvation, blah blah. Hmm. There's also an address at the bottom. You know, if I ever I feel, feel like, like getting, getting my, my god, god on. on. <laughs> wow. Huh. <laughs> Good old scene. Better get his snowmobile ready for that day. Eh, you never know. You'll probably find yourself in I'm that not church. Sure where those doors lead. I should go check it out. <laughs> Bet she ends up in that church. How can I help us? It's my mother's birthday. <laughs> wow. That was easy. And alarmingly a so. A jail cell. Looks cramped. If I ever feel the urge to clean, I'll know where to go. Huh. Very funny. Clean floor with mop. Let's look at the bum. Looks like an incarcerated bum. Let's talk to the bum. Hey. What? I can't hear you. TV. Gotta turn TV off. There we go. Nice. That was getting annoying. I agree. Thank you for making me turn it off first. Hey. <laughs> Hi there. Ask what he's in for. Persuade him to distract Lenny. Let's see what he's in for. So, why'd they put you in that cell? Uh, well, uh, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Uh-huh. Is that so? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to steal anything. Uh -huh. I was just using my pockets to move the beer to the checkout. Mm -hmm. That's the worst excuse I have ever heard. For your information, I happen to have a deadly fear of shopping carts. I take my last statement back. This excuse is even worse. Hey, it wasn't your father who was killed by a shopping cart when you were eight. Uh, I sure hope not. To be fair, mine wasn't either. It was just Uncle Bob. But that doesn't mean it was any less traumatic, mind you. To this day, I still get nervous breakdowns at grocery stores. I think I've heard enough, buddy. <laughs> You're right. We should stop before the flashbacks begin. You know, I kind of believe him. Persuade You need to keep the blonde cop out there busy for a while. I do? <laughs> Ten bucks says you do. Hmm. I'd say my services in this matter are worth at least twenty bucks. Nine. Fifteen. Eight. Fine. Ten. <laughs> Seven. <sighs> Deal. Good. So, uh, what am I doing again? Distract that young cop in the lobby. I don't care how you do it, as long as you keep him occupied for a while. Okay, then. Let me know when. Will do. Mm, let's look around a little bit before we put the plan no in action. Posters. I'm disappointed. Where is the person that's supposed to be in here? An axe, a sledgehammer, and some other heavy tools. Seems dangerous. Like, I'm sure this is all evidence. Yeah, it's all evidence. Who's supposed to be in here watching this? They look sturdy enough. Wouldn't be able to break them open without taking my time and making a lot of noise. If I ever need to find evidence, I'll know where to look. Yeah, in the evidence lockers. Go figure. A computer monitor. Probably recovered stolen goods. There's no way small town cops would be that up to date with the modern world. Look <laughs> at that CRT monitor. Just a bunch of boxes filled with office supplies. Hey. Hi there. <sighs> okay, gotta go. See ya. He's so like, hey, what's, how's it going? I believe him about that shopping cart phobia, by the way. Hey, the jail is off limits. You shouldn't be in there. Oh, sorry. I, I just heard someone yelling. Yeah, you should keep a better eye on things. Uh... I think that guy in the cell needs some help. Ah, oh, what now? Should go check it out. Okay, I have to make this quick. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Don't mind me, Sheriff. Okay, let's have a look. Okay. Um, let's see, on 8-16-81, 11.40pm, 
An individual was encountered on the side of the dirt road a few miles from Conwell Springs, blindly walking forward with his eyes wide open. The subject was identified as Joseph Rain. He did not respond when touched or spoken to. He appeared to be dirty from head to toe and wet up to his knees. Mr. Rain was fiercely clutching a small tape recorder complete with tape. Being cooperative, he could be led into the squad car and transported back to town. At 12.25 p.m., picked up... Okay, the dating is a bit off, but this should say 8... 8.17 because it's now... Oh no, it's noon. The chronology of this is weird. Oh no, it's later that day. I'm sorry. They're right. Picked up Mrs. Rain and brought her along with Mr. Rain to the emergency room at the community clinic. So, no, the chronology is still off. This is on... This... This comes before this. This should say 12.25 a.m., I think. The next day at 8, upon routine inspection of the patrol... Patrol car, but a tape recorder was found discarded on the back seat. Filed as evidence in locker number five. Tape recorder was found discarded in the back in the back seat. Well, discarded on the back seat, I guess. So I assume that this is afterwards. They found him, and then they picked up his wife and took them to the emergency room at the community clinic, not a hospital. So locker number five has the evidence. Hmm, I'm gonna have to get my hands on that recorder. It's in locker number five. Okay, let's find the key to locker number five. Okay. Got it. Whoa, that was, hmm. That worked out well. Hey, I didn't go through files at all. Hey, Sheriff. What's the deal with that bump? Yeah, he's easily distracted. Does he have anything new to say? Hey. Hi there. Hey there. Okay, gotta go. See ya. Can I just walk over to the locker? What are the odds? Alright, got it. Can we listen to it here? Let's at least walk to the other side of the desk first. Oh, I took the police report. All right. Remove tape. Note to self. Remember, the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. Okay. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. Oh. Uh. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting closer to finding the source. I have a theory, but I need help. I'm gonna have to involve somebody else. Is this her father? That didn't, I mean, it didn't sound like a grandfathery type voice. What really happened to you that night, Grandpa? Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to say about that. You don't have anything to say about it. All right, let's, let's go home. Because right now I want to run straight for that attic. Let's go. Hey, uh, Kathy, wait. Yes, Lenny? What? Do you eat foot? Uh, uh food? <laughs> Absolutely not. I feed on human misery. I, uh... Relax, Lenny. Yes, I do eat food. Oh, well, great. Can I buy you food sometime? And also buy food for me? And, and then maybe <laughs> we can eat the food together? <laughs> Sounds like a date. No, God, no. Absolutely not. Or actually, I'd rather eat a foot. Um, the, I... You know, I know it's not in her character, but I kind of wish there were, like, a nice... I'm really busy right now. Yeah. Maybe later. <laughs> like, a nice oh, letdown. Okay. See ya. 
Nobody likes to be turned down. We should be at least a little bit nice about it. I got an attic to go check out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're going upstairs. Actually, I should probably ask yeah. Grandma first. I, I was actually going to stop and do that. It's like, yeah, let's go talk to Grandma about it first. Oh, hello, dear. Hey, Grams. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? The attic. Would you mind if I took a look in the attic? I suppose it would do no harm. Come with me. Oh, she's gonna be the guide. Thanks, Grandma. You're welcome, dear. Oh, it was creepy up here. Be careful now. Oh, and the music's creepy too. Oh no. Okay. All right. So I'm going to leave this episode off right here. Uh, so far, it's, it's lots of mystery. I'm liking it. I can't wait to uncover all the mysteries. Thanks for watching. More installments coming up. Hang in there, and uh, I will see you guys around. Goodbye now.